everyone, it's me, Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today we're going to talk about maintaining a healthy garden. Um, I get a, a lot of comments on how my garden is super pristine, which thank you guys very much. I take a lot of pride in it, but um, also we use a lot of it, and I go through and I maintain a lot of it. I have a smaller space garden, so I know that's a lot easier for me to do, but it's something that... I probably am going to even do when I have a big garden just because I'm a little OCD about it. So let's go walk around and I'll tell you guys a couple things that I use to maintain. I have my garden shears and a knife and a harvest basket. So let's go see what we got. You guys saw in my last video, um, I pulled the cauliflower that was right here. So once cauliflower gives you the cauliflower, it's done. So I'm going to be pulling up this plant and kind of getting it out of here. It's gonna take more, it's gonna take two hands. So I'm gonna get this plant out of here and start getting this pot prepared for something else. So many people ask me how I maintain healthy greens. So as you can see, my green bed is looking really, really nice. I'm actually not picking any greens today, but as you can see, the lettuce we cut constantly constantly cut the lettuce i cut it back to a couple leaves and then i let it grow um, these were the last two that we used for taco tuesday which is why they're smaller than these two the other thing i go in and i look for as you can see on my swiss chard i have a couple of leaves that are getting a little bit um diseased i don't know if they're diseased or they're more so just been beaten by the sun but i'm gonna go through and cut all of these off grab some shears so when I'm doing gardening main maintenance I always have a harvest bucket so that's my basket for things that I'm gonna be keeping and then I have a just a regular plain bucket that I can then throw away all the bad leaves into so I'm gonna go back to that Swiss chard and kind of see what we can get rid of um, because it's growing really really nicely and the big leaves are starting to come in so I want to make sure that the plant isn't going to be getting sick so let's do that so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna take off all of these leaves like this and usually they're the ones at the very very bottom um, usually these are like the first leaves to come in and as you can see they're not like bug ridden or anything like that they have a little bit of something on them Probably a little bit of aphids, but taking that off, and if I see, so this one is a little bit gross too, so I'm going to take that one off. As you can see, those have the start of a little something something, but not really. So now I'm going to protect the plant from anything else. Now those had a little bit of aphids on them, so what I'm going to do afterwards is I'm going to go through this whole bunch and then I'm going to spray it down with some water okay so as you guys can see I went through and I took a lot off of the Swiss chard plants um, this one had the biggest leaves so I took the most off of this one and then I tried to increase a lot of airflow so when your plants start getting bugs on them it's usually because something is triggering and the plant to say that the plants unhealthy um, when you guys look at this, I let my soil get a little bit dry. It's not too, too dry, but it's a little bit dry so that it would start triggering that so that you guys can start seeing what signs I look for. So instead of going in with a bunch of different pesticides or anything like that, especially because these are all healthy. All of these are healthy, partly because we use these a lot more than we use those. But all I did was go in, trim off all the leaves that could have been infected, the ones that were making the plant sick and then I went through and I just prune the plant if the if you don't eat it the bugs will so make sure you guys are pruning your plants and you won't have bug problems so the next thing we're gonna look at are my little cauliflowers so this cauliflower is doing pretty well I don't think that it's gonna get super super huge partly because of the hail damage that I had and partly because that it's looking pretty good right now. 
usually when the cauliflower is pretty exposed like this that means that they're done so and you'll start seeing like little spacings in between here this one's not flowering like the one in the last video so I'm gonna leave it for a couple more days and kind of see how it grows but as you can see everything else in this bed as we look around it is looking pretty healthy we do have a couple little fungus nets in here but they're not doing anything to the plants they're pretty much just letting me know that there's this bed is still holding a little bit more water so in the future I probably might put rocks down at the bottom of this bed this is the one on the patio I might put rocks down in the bottom of it to make it drain a little bit better but as we look down everything else is growing well and doing well we want to inspect our plants my cilantro I use about every day so that one is always getting trimmed so it's going good so you'll probably hear me say this a few times in this video but yes if you do not eat it the bugs will eat it so make sure that you're planting a garden that you can use every day I walk back here and even being such a small space garden I walk back here and I find something for breakfast or for lunch or for dinner or sometimes for all three and I'm able to maintain a healthy space in my garden and maintain a healthy garden because I'm constantly using the things that are here. If your things get overgrown and if there's just not enough light, if they're not getting enough water because they're too bushy, then yes, they're gonna send out a chemical to all the bugs and says, come take some of these leaves off of me because no one else wants to. So make sure it's you, not the bugs. So as I survey the cabbage, everything's looking really healthy. This one, it's pretty low to the ground and it's holding a little bit of rain but so far it's so good so I'm not going to take any of those leaves off same thing with this one which I might come in and take this one if you see any holes or any yellowing that's just more leaves that can be pruned from the actual plant the tomato plant is doing really well guys this is the one that got destroyed in the hell damage and look at how big it is and look at how many flowers that one looks like it's going to be a little cat based but there are a ton of little flowers in here so that is looking beautiful and we'll check signs for any type of damage with that but right now the soil's happy the plants happy it's not a million degrees so it's pretty happy but we'll take this leaf and put it into our discard pile so moving right along um these two lettuce plants i don't think i like this lettuce guys it's really really small and it is not like a, like a stiffer lettuce so it just kind of tastes weird like we use a lot of it but it doesn't really get that big so I don't think that this red cell lettuce is one that I'll be planting again um, these are a bunch of weeds that I need to get out and as you can see when we're looking at these cauliflowers this one is getting a little bit of damage so we're gonna look at it and we're gonna see if we see any insects. So I don't see any insects, and this one wasn't one affected by the hail. I don't see any bug poop that just looks like dirt. Actually, it's just wood chips. I don't see any bug poop, but I am gonna go through and I'm gonna take some of these bottom leaves off because these leaves don't look as healthy as these leaves. And it also could be because there's a ton more weeds over here. So right now I'm gonna go through and just pick all these weeds out of here to make sure it's not fighting for any type of nutrients. And then I'm gonna take those bottom leaves off. So I'll be right back. So I got all the weeds out. And also, if you guys can see down here, I took off all the very bottom leaves. So all the very bottom leaves I took off. Missed one over there I gotta get. But all the weeds and all the bottom leaves are off. And so now this bed is gonna be a lot healthier again. I didn't find any bugs, so I'm thinking just something wanted to try it. But you know, I like to try things too. So the leaves are still healthy, so I'm not gonna pull the leaves off. And maybe whatever tried it doesn't like cabbage. So they're not gonna eat the rest. Or not cabbage, but snow, or snowball cauliflower. So they won't eat the rest. We'll see. So one thing that I always do is I take off that bottom layer of leaves. 
Now, if you think about it, the plant is, those bottom layers of leaves are sitting on the ground, which the ground you want to have fungus and bacteria in it because you want those different things in it for the, the soil to be healthy and for there to be microbial life in the soil. But when that's sitting with just water, like if you water your garden and there's just those leaves sitting with that bacteria and just water sitting on it, it's gonna cause a lot of unhealthiness in your plant. So by taking off that bottom layer and just leaving the stock of the plant, that's gonna give you way healthier plants and it's gonna allow you to still have that bacteria and those microorganisms in your soil without affecting the health of your plant. The next thing we're gonna finally do is finally clean up this um, eggplant here. So remember these ones had got a lot of hell damage and as you can see these leaves are really really badly damaged but they're also starting to yellow um, and now this is now that this is yellowing it's going to send out a signal to bugs to say basically come prune me so before the bugs do that which as you can see on the back of the leaves there are no bugs but as you guys can see we're starting to get some new baby eggplants so before that happens, I'm going to take off these leaves so then the plant doesn't feel like it's unhealthy. So I'm gonna trim this up and I will show you guys what it looks like when I get done. Okay, so now we're back. And I know you guys might think this looks really, really drastic, but I have been waiting for all of these little leaves to get a little bit bigger. So all of these little curly leaves, they start off really curly like this and then they're gonna open up and be a full-fledged beautiful leaf. So I waited before taking off all of the damaged leaves until these little baby leaves got a little bit bigger. And now that there's so many on here and now that the plant is trying to make so many eggplants, that's one, two, three, four, five over here, six, and seven over there. So that's seven eggplants that the plant is trying to make. So I want to give it the healthiest little start that I could possibly give it. So I'm going to go through and also when you're looking in the back, those are the old bean plants that were destroyed. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to take those out as well as get all of these weeds that are growing in this vacant spot right here. So I will be back after that. Okay, doesn't that look so much better? Now it's a big blank space waiting for me to plant God knows what. Probably some melons on this side and some beans on this side along to protect this little beautiful eggplant. Now time for this bed. Dun dun dun! So here's a side note guys. A lot of people always tell me that I don't have bugs in my garden. I do. I have little annoying gnats. Gnats are everywhere all over my garden. They're mainly in the places that hold a lot of water, like some of the beds, but I have found a plant that is going to save me from these little gnats. Because I'll let off butter or ladybugs and ladybugs will eat a little bit of them and then they'll fly away and find something else more important that they like. And these gnats will just be everywhere. They're all over my community too with the trees that they have here. So I think that's one of the things that brings them in. But this flower, I do not know the name of it. I bought it because it was pretty and it was dark purple. And they always have them at Home Depot. So the next time I go to Home Depot, I will get the name and put it on my Instagram so that I can tell you guys what it is. But the gnats are getting caught on the leaves of this flower. This bed over here actually does not have a single gnat in it. And it doesn't have it because of this little guy. If anybody knows what this flower is called, please put the name in the comments so that then everybody else knows that this is the one you want to get plant all over your garden if you have gnats. As you can see on here, they are caught on the leaves and they're attracted to it. So it's flying, all the little gnats are flying over here and then they're getting stuck on the leaves and they're dying. So, I mean, it's not really pretty for the plants, which I mean, it grows these beautiful purple flowers. So I'm not too super annoyed by it. Cause I mean, as you can see, like they are all over here and all of these are just dead gnats, but there's not a single gnat in this entire bed. Not a single one. 
Isn't that cool, guys? So I thought that was really cool, and I'm gonna find out what the name of that flower is because if that's the case, I think that can be the problem solver to my other bed that has a lot of gnats in it because it's holding water. I think that maybe if I can get that flower, they seem to be attracted to it and they get caught on it. So it's kind of like its own little personal gnat trapper, which is nice. I like the sound of that because I've tried the uh, um, apple cider vinegar and yeah, they get them, but not really and I one time put those little yellow cards all over my garden until I found a lace wing on it and I was mortified because lace wings are what eat any type of aphids so I snatched all those little things out and I just went straight to being able to make sure I have healthy soil and focusing on healthy soil has taken a lot of the pest pressure out of my garden but the gnats still get those little gnats but now I think I have a little defense for them and they're going down so this bed is big lush and beautiful and it's actually quite healthy why because I use a lot of the cilantro we use this pretty much almost every other day and then we also eat the broccoli greens as well as the broccoli so it kind of lets us naturally trim this bed um, we're not eating the cabbage leaves yet so I'm gonna go through and once again I'm gonna take off that bottom ring of cabbage leaves but as you can see this bed's pretty healthy guys and it's because we're eating it before the bugs are eating it now one thing I wanted to mention is a lot of people ask me when to pull broccoli this broccoli head I let go a little bit longer and you can see that it's separating and that it's gonna start flowering soon. Down here you can see little flowers starting to come in. So this broccoli head was ready probably about a week ago, but I wanted to show you guys what it looked like when it started to become overly ready. You wanna get your broccoli when it's nice and tight, kind of, this one's a little bit more immature. These ones are broccoli shoots. So remember how I said, after cutting your big broccoli head, leave your broccoli because it will grow little shoots everywhere. And as you can see, these little shoots are starting to become to the point to where you want to pull them. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to grab that big giant broccoli head for dinner. And then I'm going to clean up these bottom ones with their leaves. And then I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards. Up real quick to show you guys what I meant. So as you can see, this cabbage leaf is on laying on the ground. And it has got a little pool of water in it and dirt in it. And this is what's gonna attract all of the bugs because this is gonna make the, health, the leaf very unhealthy. So this is why you wanna get that bottom row of leaves off. Okay, so I'm finished. And once again, I know this is gonna look a little drastic to most of you guys, but now my plants can actually breathe. So I cut off all the bottom layers of all of the cabbages and the broccolis. As you guys can see, like on this broccoli, I have done it all the way since it was a smaller bro broccoli plant and it still gave me a nice size broccoli head. This one actually was one of my biggest ones. So now all the plants are gonna get a lot of light and they are healthier because now they don't have that kind of pressure for disease. And the cabbage is heading just fine and it'll be just fine not having its bottom leaves. Okay, so when it comes to my snow or my sugar snap peas, I treat all of my beans the same. I let them grow as wild and crazy as they want to, and I grab all the beans that are left on there and I let them naturally die off. Um, as you can see at the bottom here, the the leaves are starting to die. So if I can get in there and cut back a little bit of them, I do to get some of the browning off of it. But it's just that these sugar snap peas are starting to go out of season. These are gonna be my first plant that I am going to sacrifice to any bugs. So what do I mean by my first plant that I'm gonna sacrifice to any bugs? <laughs> Basically, every season in my garden, I have some plant that when I am planting little newbie plants, that is the plant that the insects are eating because that's the plant that's dying. 
insects come because of dying plants. Now that sugar snap pea plant is still gonna produce for me, but it is going to naturally die. And by it naturally dying, it is going to put bugs into my garden. Now, is that a bad thing? No. If I want to have a garden that's going to have a very successful ecosystem into it, I'm going to need a reason for all of those bugs I talked about in my There's No Bad Bug video, which if you guys haven't watched, I will link down below in the comments. So I'll pin it so that you guys can see it. But I need the lizards. I'm going to need the scorpions, unfortunately. And I'm going to need all of the uh, good bugs that eat the aphids and different things like that. Now in order for me to get those in my garden so that then if I do have some type of disruption to where something just goes really awry, there's going to be something there to eat it, I need to sacrifice a couple plants in order to get those things back in here. As you guys can see, I have no lizards. I have no insects at all in my garden. So if I want to have this snow pea plant that is going to keep producing snow peas even though it's unhealthy, but that's my only snow pea, so I want snow peas for as long as possible, I'm going to have to introduce some bad bugs into my garden, but with those bugs, it's going to bring in all of the other bugs, or, or the lizards and the scorpions. So when the summer hits and Arizona has its huge just bug pressure, the scorpions are going to stay out here versus going into my house because it's going to be a cooler environment because of all the plants and it also is going to have plenty to eat and it's going to eat everything that I don't want eating some of my other plants that are way healthy. So that's kind of how it works with trying to create an ecosystem. So everything else is looking good. We do need to take out all those weeds back there and then maybe move that tomato plant back over here, but then grab some of this dill. I've been using this dill slowly, but it's starting to get a little bit crazy, so I'm gonna pull some of it, probably get some of these bottom ones first, and I'm going to put that in a sauce for my fish. So I just thought I would point this out, guys. When it comes to pruning my dill plant, what I did is I took the big, bot the big leaves off the bottoms, but then I also cut off the very tops. Um, I don't want my dill plant to flower and when they get as big as this as soon as it starts to really warm up this plant is going to try and start flowering so if you cut off the very tops where the flowers are going to go then that delays the process so just a quick tip so so up oh, trying to find some light let me just sit down here the sun wants to come up so now that i'm done kind of cleaning up my garden which that, that looks so beautiful guys it's so beautiful, so beautiful now. But now I'm done kind of cleaning it up. I'm going to take all of the gross leaves, a lot of cleaning, and I'm going to put them in my future worm bin. So if you guys don't know, that little section in my garden that I've just been throwing leaves at, I've been trying to build up enough stuff there in order to put some worms in and let them have enough to eat for some time because I want to be able to encourage worms to be able to eating there so then when my garden is really really huge I have some worms there that can eat all of the basically discarded leaves and plants that come out of my garden and hopefully give me some worm casting and some compost so that's the goal that's the first time I'm trying this out so we'll see if it works I've watched some videos and I've seen some other people do like in ground like worm composting bins so we're gonna actually see if it works but I'm gonna put this in there I'll show it to you guys it's actually pretty full now finally I've been doing this for a couple months now so I think probably maybe next week I'm gonna go get some dirt stick on top of it and then put the worms in there and let them kind of do their little worm thing and live their worm life and hopefully give me compost and worm castings so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna take the big basket of stuff, which I have a lot of stuff in there, guys. I didn't realize that, I mean, we've been eating out of the garden pretty much every day, but cleaning it up, now I'm like, okay, what am I gonna cook with all this? So I'm gonna take that inside and figure out something to cook for dinner. So this is that pile I was telling you guys about. I put a mesh in here so that the worms will be able to go from this area of food to the garden bed. 
and it'll go all the way from this garden bed to that garden bed because all the this whole thing is linked up together so I want to be able to have the worms go from there to there but have this kind of be their home to where they can just eat up any type of just leaves that we just have going on here so gonna be doing that pretty shortly guys so that's all I got for you guys I will put a picture after this so that you guys can see everything I've har harvested out of my garden I'm gonna go in and make a Valentine's dinner for mr. Benson so happy Valentine's Day to everybody that is watching this thank you guys for supporting our channel and don't forget to like and subscribe and share our videos so until next time, don't forget to plant yourself a garden because even a small space can give you tons of food. Bye guys!